Hello, my name is Carolyn Colpine, and I am on the Microsoft Dynamics SL support team. Today, we are going to discuss the basics of using the transaction import functionality in Microsoft Dynamics SL. We will discuss control macros, data files, and completing the transaction import process. At the end of this video, you will be able to create a simple data file, create and read a control macro, and process an import of data using the transaction import screen. Let's get started. The transaction import utility allows users to import data into Microsoft Dynamics SL databases using a data file containing the data you wish to import and a control macro. The control macro simply tells the system in which field to put the data that is included in your data file. Transaction import sends the data it imports to specific data entry screens. The end data appears just as if entered manually. With the exception of data import and some system manager screens, transaction import can send data into almost every screen available in Microsoft Dynamics SL. Transaction import also supports most customized Microsoft Dynamics SL screens. The first step to be completed when importing data into Microsoft Dynamics SL is to generate a control macro. You will find the control macro generator in the System Manager module located in the Administration group. Let's launch that screen. The first step is to fill in the screen number. You can press F3 and use the list to pick your screen. We are going to demo the Journal Transaction screen today. I always use the control file type of Intelligent. It gives the user more information on how to assemble the data file. Then you will give the control file name. I generally just accept the default file name given by the system. And in this case, it's screen number 01010000.ctl. Once you're satisfied with the information in this screen, click OK. To view the macro, click View Macro. It comes up on the screen in Notepad. This journal transaction screen that we are importing into today has two levels, the batch level and the detail level, or level 0 and level 1. You can see by looking at the level 0 detail that each field that you see in the screen is designated as an import field and given a number. This will tell you where to put it in the data file. The first field is the batch number. The second field is the data type. The third field is the batch type. Then comes the peer post, etc. Now let's take a look at a simple data file. The first information you must identify in the data file is the level into which you are importing that line of data. Therefore, for my batch level information, you can see I have designated it as level 0. As you know, some fields in the data entry screen are autofilled, such as the batch number. So in my data file, I have left the batch number field, which would be in column B, with no data, because the system assigns a batch number and I do not supply that data. In column C, or import field 2, I have it empty because I am accepting the default period to post, and so on. You can see then on level one, I have supplied the account number in import field two. Import field one is my company ID, which I am leaving as the default. And so on, I have left a blank column for each field for which I am not supplying data and accepting the default. I don't have any data entered until I go over to column row M, which is my debit amount and then my credit amount on the next line. After you have assembled your data file and you have your control macro, then you need to fill out the transaction import screen. The first thing the screen wants to know is where your data file is located and the name of the file. You can press F3 in the data file name to find your data file. So I will press F3. And since I saved my data file as an Excel file and a notepad file, I want to search all files. I'm going to choose the notepad file in this instance. 
the data tile file by Lee Vizaski, the screen, F3, and choose the journal transaction screen. My control file was saved in this folder. Here it is, the 01010000.ctl file. The output log file name, I generally just name it log.log .log so that it overwrites the same log file every time I run the TI so as not to clutter up my hard drive with miscellaneous log files. And in the last, I generally uncheck the run minimize box. What this will do is when I'm running the TI, it will show the journal transaction screen as the import is running. And sometimes if you watch close enough, you'll be able to spot why you might have an error. So let's click the Begin Processing button to begin our import. You will see that the journal transaction screen launches as the data is being imported. After it finishes, I usually click, click the Edit Errors button, which will show you any errors that may have happened during the import. You can see I didn't have any errors. If you do have errors, it's always best to resolve the first error in the list, rerun the import, and then see how many other errors that takes care of down the line. Now let's go take a look at our batch that we just created using transaction import. I'll say OK to the error file, minimize my TI screen, go back to the menu, bring up the journal transaction screen, and there's our batch for $100. You can see the accounts that I imported and the debits and credits of $100. This is the end of our video on transaction import. I hope you found the information included in the video helpful and will lead you to many successful imports.